question. Six fifteen. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Here's the news edited by Anjana Dudamgoda and read by Ramesh Pires. The headlines: The president directs allocation of Thai Buddhist groups donation to Let's Wipe a Tear project. Sri Lanka unveils government action plan based on the IMF governance diagnostic assessment. The highest paddy harvest reported from Udawalawi zone. No price revision of litro gas in March. Sri Lanka's first semi-transparent solar PV agrovoltaic pilot project commissioned. Medicare 2024 concludes with uh, marking 13 years of uninterrupted healthcare excellence. In foreign news, Putin warns West risk of nuclear war and says Moscow can strike Western targets. In sports, the National Sports Festival at Bernard Aluvihara Stadium, Martali declared open. Now the local news in detail. Deputy incumbent of the Gangarame Mahavihara, Venerable Dr. Kirinde Asaji Tero, accompanied by a group of Thai Buddhist devotees, met with President Ranil Vikramasinghe at the Presidential Secretariat today. During the meeting, a substantial financial donation of 50,000 US dollars was presented to the parlor president. President Vikramasinghe directed the secretary to the president, Samani Kanayaka, to allocate the donated funds towards the Let's Wipe a Tear Drop project, which is proposed to be launched by the president's fund aimed at providing assistance to the underprivileged groups in the country. This marks the third occasion this group has generously donated funds for charitable causes in Sri Lanka. In both 2010 and 2011, they contributed 200,000 US dollars to the Ganga Rame Temple in Colombo, and those donations were utilized to improve sanitary facilities in 1800 Buddhist temples throughout the country. The Finance Ministry on Thursday unveiled the Government Action Plan, which was prepared based on the Governance Diagnostic Assessment furnished by the International Monetary Fund. Taking to his ex-handle, Finance State Minister Shahan Sebasinga said, this action plan further demonstrates the Sri Lankan government's commitment to building a sustainable economy and good governance in the country. The IMF had prepared the governance diagnostic report at the request of Sri Lanka and the publication was deemed imperative for the authorities to adopt their own action plan to implement the recommendations in the assessment beyond the priority commitments under the EFF arrangement. Sri Lanka is the first country in Asia to have undergone the IMF governance diagnostic exercise. The IMF earlier lauded the timely publication of the GDA, highlighting that it was a commendable first step towards addressing deep-rooted corruption weaknesses. Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industries Mahindra Amaravira says that the highest paddy yield in the season has been recorded from the paddy fields belonging to the Udawalawe zone. The minister said this while addressing a press conference held at the presidential media unit last morning. The minister further said that it is a special event this year since the highest paddy yield has been recorded from the paddy fields of Udawalawe zone where the highest crop losses were reported due to the long drought last season. This news broadcast comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Continuing with more local news. The Little Gas Company's chairman, Mudita Pires, announced today Little Gas Nanka has decided not to revise the prices of its domestic LP gas cylinders for March, based on the monthly pricing formula. The prices were not amended in February either, a decision which, was, which the company said was taken after considering the financial difficulties facing the members of the public. Meanwhile, Laft's Gas PLC, the other major supplier of liquefied petroleum gas in the country, has also decided not to revise its prices in March. The State Minister for Technology, Kanaka Herat, announced that the anticipated National Cyber Security Act will be introduced this year, followed by the establishment of the Cyber Security Authority. 
Additionally, the State Minister highlighted the preparations made for the Digital Economy Summit scheduled to take place in Sri Lanka by the end of July. The summit serves as a platform for fostering innovation, collaboration and investment in digital technologies, thus propelling the country towards a more resilient and prosperous digital economy. Speaking at a press conference brief titled Collective Power to Stable Economy held at the Presidential Media Centre. And that concludes Local News. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Paveda Mahatma. Moving on to the main news story. The construction of the first ever railway underpass to conserve the Elephant Corridor commenced in the Gatadivula area in Galgamo today. The project was launched under the auspices of Minister of Transportation Bandura Gunavadana. It is reported that the government had decided to commence the construction of underpass due to the high number of elephant deaths as a result of colliding with trains. Accordingly, the government is set to identify elephant corridors along railway tracks to build the underpasses. And that was the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. And in watch light this evening, the Department of Meteorology has cautioned the people of rising atmospheric temperatures at some places in the northwestern, western, southern and Sabaragama provinces and in the Banab district in the coming hours. The advisory issued at 3.30 p.m. today will be in effect until tomorrow evening. As per, as per the advisory, under the under this level of temperature, fatigue is possible with prolonged exposure and activity. Continuing activity could result in heat cramps. And that came to you in Watch Night. Coming up, World News. Moving on to the bulletin of World News and first the headlines. Putin warns West of risk of nuclear war, says Moscow can strike Western targets. Bangladesh building kills, fire kills 46, injures dozens. Russian police out in force ahead of Alexei Navalny's burial in Moscow. Now the world is in detail. President Vladimir Putin told Western countries on Thursday they risked provoking a nuclear war if they sent troops to fight in Ukraine, warning that Moscow had the weapons to strike targets in the West. The war in Ukraine has triggered the worst crisis in Moscow's relations with the West since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. Putin has previously spoken of the dangers of a direct confrontation between NATO and Russia, but his nuclear warning on Thursday was one of his most explicit. Addressing lawmakers and other members of the country's elite, Putin, aged 71, repeated his accusations that the West was bent on weakening Russia and he suggested Western leaders did not understand how dangerous their meddling could be in what he cast as Russia's own internal affairs. A massive fire in Bangladesh that raged through six-story building home and two restaurants where many families with children were dining has killed at least 46 people and injured dozens, the health minister says. Fire authorities said a gas leak or a stove could have caused Thursday's blaze in the capital which spread quickly after breaking out in a biryani restaurant that was uh, only rained in following two hours of efforts by 13 units of firefighters. Health Minister Samantha Lal sent to reporters hospitals are treating 22 people with burn wounds. Police took up positions near the church where Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny is due to be buried in Moscow later on Friday as his supporters estimated over 1,000 people had gathered to say goodbye to him. Navalny, President Vladimir Putin's fiercest critic inside Russia, died at the age of 47 in an Arctic penal colony on the 16th of February, sparking accusations from his supporters that he had been murdered. The Kremlin has denied any state involvement in his death. Tension is high ahead of his funeral because the authorities have outlawed his movement as extremists and cast his supporters as US-backed troublemakers out to foment revolution Previous gatherings of his supporters have been broken up by force. Back to the headlines of the world news. Putin warns West of risk of nuclear war and says Moscow can strike Western targets. Bangladesh building fire kills 46, injures dozens. And Russian police out in force ahead of Alexei Navalny's burial in Moscow. And that concludes world news. Development news. 
In developer news, the first ever semi transparent solar photovoltaic powered agrovoltaic pilot project of Sri Lanka was commissioned in Hantana Kandy on Thursday, marking a significant milestone. Funded by the Asian Development Bank, the project aims to pioneer the integration of solar power with agricultural activities. The pilot project will help multiple government bodies, including the Ministry of Plantation Industries, Ministry of Power and Energy, Ceylon Electricity Board, T Small Holders Development Authority and Sustainable Energy Authority to study the development of renewable energy in tea plantations across the country. And that came to you in Developer News. Moving on with Sports News. In Sports News, Sports Minister Harin Fernando, who declared open the newly constructed Bernard Aluhara Stadium, Matale, on Wednesday, said this year National Sports Festival will be held at renovated Bernard Aluhara Stadium. Sports Minister further said that he remembered twice in 1982 and 2005 National Sports Festivals was held at the stadium. By the time, there were no facilities like today. The Sports Ministry has spent 48 million rupees to reconstruct the stadium. Today, the stadium consists of a swimming pool, gymnasium, new grass track and pavilion, which give a boost to Matale athletes. And that came to you in Sports News. Go eka kiyana youth ikata, life eke change ikata, niya meta set penna, as maha gena daka pugina, habe karana, youth ikata, niya meta set penna, friendship eka menna. Your new NSP Ithrumitru account, NSP I am, a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. In a dazzling display of innovation and healthcare prowess, the 13th edition of Sri Lanka's esteemed National Healthcare Expo, Medicare 2024, was officially inaugurated on the 1st of March at the Siribao Bandarnaika Memorial Exhibition Center at Iconic BMICH. The grand inauguration was attended by Honorable Health Minister, Dr. Ramesh Patirana as the chief guest amongst the other distinguished guests. Medicare 2024 rolled out over three days till the 3rd of March, featuring four main expos, such as National Healthcare Expo, Ayurveda and Herbal Expo, Medical Tourism Expo and Health Living Expo, and features a number of medical seminars and B2B interaction platforms. The expo featured over 130 stalls for local and international organizations and that was business news business news sponsored by national savings bank the safest place for your money go ekatiana you ticket life ke change ticket niya meta set penna as wahagena dekh pugina habe karna you ticket niya meta set penna friendship meta menna the all new nsb ithrumitru account nsb i am a plan for your dream Moving on to economic news. State Minister for Finance Ranjit Singh Balapitiya says Sri Lanka will cut 200 rupees a kilogram tax on imported dates on to 1 rupee in the next one or two days. The so-called special commodity levy will be for the Ramzan period, he said in a statement. Critics have said Sri Lanka usually cuts or raises import duties without prior warning through midnight cassettes leading to corruption and also undermining parliamentary control of public finances. And that was economic news. Weather report. And finally on to the weather report. Showers or thunder showers may occur at few places in the Kandatara, Ratnapura, Gaul and Matara districts in the evening or at night. Mainly dry weather will prevail elsewhere in the island. And that was the weather report. Now to conclude this news broadcast, a recap of the main news headlines. The President directs allocation of Thai Buddhist groups' donations to Let's Wipe a Tear project. Sri Lanka unveils government action plan based on the IMF governance diagnostic assessment. The highest paddy harvest reported from Udavalavi zone. No price revision of Lithrogas in March. Sri Lanka's first semi-transparent solar PV agrovoltaic pilot project commissioned. Medicare 2024 inaugurated with marking 13 years of uninterrupted healthcare excellence. In foreign news, Putin warns West risk of nuclear war and says Moscow can strike Western targets. 
and in sports, the National Sports Festival at Bernard Aluvihara Stadium, Madhuri, declared open. And with that, we conclude this news broadcast from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Back to your Friday evening's hostess, Santi Tavam, to keep you company till end of transmission. Over to you, Santi.